Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Game Award nominees are here, like the content creator of the year, which obviously has me. Huh. I don't know who the f any of these people are and why is there always a VTuber? All right, what about most anticipated game? That is a big list. That's actually a really solid list for game of the year uh, or for most anticipated game. Death Stranding shouldn't be there. It should be something else. But I think we all know GTA is going to win as much as I'm hyped as hell for Yote Prime Monster Hunter. It's got to go to GTA 6, man. It has to. What does best adaptation mean? Oh, like best TV show. Wait, there's a there's a Yakuza show. So out of these two, I mean, Fallout was pretty good. At least I watched all the way through it. Uh, the last episode sucked because it was basically, haha, get ready for season two, lol. But we know it's gotta go to Arcane. Like 100%. Best multiplayer, COD is there, Helldivers 2 is there, Mario Party is there, Tekken 8 is there, Space Marines here. Oh, I'm honestly shocked to see Space Marine in a category. Let's go, dude. All right, let's see about best family. We know that's probably going to Astrobot. Plucky Squire shouldn't even be there. Ew. As much as I hate what Astrobot represents, because I don't know, that, that game was kind of mid for like an adult playing a video game. But as far as a family, like if I, you know, when I inevitably have kids, I kept thinking how good Astrobot would be to play with a little kid. Same with Mario Party though, but I never played Jamboree yet. I felt too burned by the past Mario Party games that I never bought Jamboree. Like I loved Zelda, but as far as a family game is concerned, I think it's gotta go to Astro Bot. Best fighting game, uh, the only one I played out of this was Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And as much as I love that game just because I'm a Dragon Ball fan, hot take, it was a terrible fighting game. It had awful controls and the combat was just all over the place. Like out of all of these games I know, Marvel is a competent fighting game and Tekken is a competent fighting game. Best RPG, Dragon's Dogma, Elden Ring. We already know it's Elden Ring, Elden Ring wins. Uh, these other games being here is pretty cool though. Best action adventure, Astrobot shouldn't be there. I've heard good things about this Prince of Persia game. Apparently it's phenomenal. Silent Hill is not an action game, <laughs> like at all. Star Wars, actually. Oh, Star Wars over Zelda. Honestly, as much as I loved Echoes of Wisdom, I didn't find the overall experience to be, be uh, very memorable. And when I compare these two and I think about Star Wars, like the side content in Star Wars sucked. I rushed the main story and man, I'm glad that I did. Maybe I'm going to take the L on this one, but I'm going to vote for Star Wars, man. What about best action game? This is not a very good list. Wukong shouldn't be here. Stellar Blade, I could see people saying yes. Uh, I don't know. For me, I think it's going to end up being Space Marine because it's a game focused primarily on combat. I will say with my over 100 hours in Space Marine, I would heavily criticize where the combat is at right now. But the melee combat is actually really competent and the gunplay feels fantastic. It's just all of the other mechanics around it. I never played Stellar Blade. As far as I'm concerned, this is just a, 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 a sex sells video game. Helldivers 2 I found kind of boring, but I understand why people like it. Call of Duty, probably should win this one for best action game. And Wukong was mid. It's just a mid souls like, I'm sorry. I'm still just gonna put it towards Space Marine though. Oh, best VR game. Let me see this pathetic list. Arizona Sunshine Remake, no, that's an old game. Asgard's Wrath 2, maybe, I don't know. The Batman game I can't play because I need a Quest 2, or Quest 3, I mean. Metal Singer VR is a VR port of a game, and Metro Awakening was terrible. No surprise, like this is a pretty solid list for VR for this year, but I'm not surprised that the committee at the Game Awards didn't play any PC VR games this year, because otherwise Blade and Sorcery had its 1.0 update and would be on this list, and in my opinion is the VR game of the year. Best debut indie game. Animal Well is here. Oh, dude, that's so good. Okay, uh, I think Bellatro is going to win, unfortunately, because that game has popped off like crazy. I'm not into those card type games, but I can definitely see the appeal. Unfortunately, this whole list is completely unfair because Bellatro is here, but I'm still going to give it to Animal Well. I found that game so charming. And out of all of these indie games, 
I think Animal Well is the only one that's developed by a single individual. So that's awesome that it got on this list. What's the difference between debut indie game and independent game? For outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. Oh, that's what it means. UFO 50 is here, really? That's cool. Uh, these two don't belong here. Bellatro is way too popular, so it's gonna win again. I still gotta give it to Animal Well, because that is a single individual who made a game that has so many different layers to it. Not to mention I'm a sucker for a Metroid game. And that's what Animal Well was. Best community support. Final Fantasy XIV is probably gonna win that. Out of all of these, even Baldur's Gate is here. That's kind of unfair, but I'm gonna say No Man's Sky. I don't play it, but I keep up with its updates and my God. Games for Impact is gonna be, oh. Oh, like weird artsy, like discovering your sexuality indie game type thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, pass. Innovation and accessibility. That's got to go to Star Wars for me. Yeah, Star Wars is here. Okay. I don't know 100% about Prince of Persia and Dragon Age, but I know from my experience with Star Wars, it had so many accessibility options and it, it kind of was that same like The Last of Us level of options in terms of visual and auditory assessment. So I'm going to give it to Star Wars, even though I don't think it's going to win this category. Best performance. OK, so these are video game actors. I don't know any of them. I know this is the Star Wars chick and Silent Hill. Well, Silent Hill for me, honestly. I, I liked how the acting in Silent Hill was very, very subdued and subtle versus all of these other acting is just acting you know it's just like ah i'm loud and i'm talking and announcing best audio design silent hill i don't even need to look at the other categories for audio design best score and music that's a tough one because as much as i have a genuine hate for final fantasy i think it's got the most bangers out of all of these like the soundtrack went hard on final fantasy what does best art direction mean <clears throat> outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation really Okay, that goes to Elden Ring then, 100%, because the world itself was instantly recognizable. And on top of that, the amount of different animations that they had for all of their attacks and everything like that. As much as I criticize Wukong, it was a very pretty game, but in my limited experience with game development, I know for a fact that most of the assets from Black Myth Wukong were from the Unreal Engine store. So I can't really give too much credit to its art direction because it was just generic Unreal Engine 5 game, you know? Whereas Erdtree was beautiful as well as like just enveloped me with its melancholy. Best narrative, that would be Silent Hill for me. I don't think anyone else is gonna feel the same way, but the Silent Hill story is going to stick with me for many, many years out of all of these other games because Silent Hill, has layers, and that's not something that I see with any of these other games. Maybe Hellblade has it. Uh, I haven't played it, so I can't frankly say. But with Silent Hill, the entire game was like focused on the main character, James, and the different levels of guilt and like social, like psychological torment that he was going through. And it all like culminated in this ending that was left ambiguous so that you could kind of interpret it your own way. I cannot say that about Final Fantasy VII because that was just a generic action game where you fight God. And the game of the year, oh boy. Uh, I've seen Wukong on too many of these lists. I'm scared that it's on the game of the year list. Yep. Well, unfortunately, we're going to take the L to China because we know Black Myth Wukong is going to win just based on numbers alone. But if I seriously scrutinize and look at this list, I don't think Astro Bot, I I'm okay with it being on this list. I don't think it deserves it because honestly speaking, Astro Bot was, it's just kind of a very good like family platformer. It didn't really do anything that pushed video games as far as a narrative and an art form. And on top of that, it was a terrible platformer. Like I'm talking in terms of like its gameplay. It didn't have a high skill ceiling like in a Mario game. It was literally just jumping and walking. That was it. Bellatro is one of those games where I'm very surprised to see it on the game of the year award, but it's also a card game, which means that it has the advantage of 
pulling in people that aren't gamers to actually playing it. Like this is a game that my wife would probably enjoy because it's just a card game. And I don't mean any offense in that way, shape or form. I'm just saying as far as game of the year, like I don't know if it's, yeah. And Black Myth Wukong, you guys know where I stand on this. This game was mid. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Everybody I know who says Black Myth Wukong was great didn't actually play Elden Ring. <laughs> so they didn't have anything to compare it to. Final Fantasy Rebirth, I don't think deserves to be on this list. I, well, I'm okay with it being on this list, but I wouldn't think it deserves that just because it was pretty incoherent uh, as far as a video game is concerned. It was very messy. And that's a lot of that is owed to the lead designer being Tetsuya Nomura, the Kingdom Hearts guy, because he just can't really like focus in on what a video game should be in terms of an art form. And this was just kind of generic anime game. Not to be confused with this other generic anime game. I mean, this was the Persona devs, so I'm not surprised it's on this list. But as far as I'd heard, this was just Persona again. But people love Persona. I don't. Uh, anyway, Elden Ring wins it for me out of this game of the year list, obviously. I really, really hope Elden Ring takes the Game of the Year award because as far as Elden Ring is concerned, whether or not you're a fan of Dark Souls and difficult games or anything like that, Elden Ring, in my opinion, is the peak of what you can accomplish with the Souls-like formula right now. I don't know how they can end up making it better. The, the amount of build variety in this singular game is staggering, especially when you consider that most of it is very well balanced. There's some builds that are definitely broken as you would expect with a game like this. I do still have my criticisms of the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. It was big for the sake of big. There was a lot of empty space that needed to be filled that wasn't. But as far as it being DLC and actually making it onto the game of the year list, I'm already insanely proud of that because frankly speaking, it was DLC that went harder than all of these other games combined.